This is Twit. There's been a lot of discussion of this uh, in GRC's news groups, and I thought it was just worth putting it on our listeners' radar because our, I know our listeners will care. Both Tom's Hardware and Extreme Tech have been following the growing controversy over the practice that's been discovered among an increasing number of SSD makers who have been caught initially releasing a new high-quality product for review and analysis by the tech publications and presumably by their large OEMs for subsequent inclusion in future systems. <clears throat> and then once that's been done, quietly replacing their initial fast and high-quality semiconductors with significantly lower cost and lower performance components while not changing the device's part number to make this apparent in any way. I didn't have it in the show notes, but for example, in some cases they are changing the use of, of uh, TLD to QLD chips going from three-layer to quad-layer, which is you know, a much lower, it's a higher density, but lower cost and, and lower performance chip replacement. I mean, universally agreed. What this means for us is that the important and typically carefully considered opinions of the reviewers of these products may not actually be reflective of the devices that we eventually purchase after relying upon such reviews. And it also means that tremendous commercial pressure is then placed upon those unfortunately fewer and fewer companies who are resisting this fraudulent bait and switch behavior. Though this is off topic for the podcast, I obviously have a huge personal interest in the whole topic of mass storage and its performance, reliability, and recoverability, and I know our more tech-savvy listeners do too. A few weeks ago, on August 16th, Extreme Tech's Joel, uh, looks like uh, Huruska, H-R-U-S-K-A, posted a piece titled, Buyer Beware. Crucial swaps P2 SSDs TLC NAND for slower chips. I have a link in the show notes for anyone who wants to read the whole thing. He started off by saying Crucial has come under fire after a retest of its well-reviewed P2 SSD demonstrated that the company has swapped from its launch design to a much inferior product. This is not the first time SSD manufacturers have been caught bait and switching customers in this fashion, and it's deeply frustrating to see companies willing to subvert their own review process. The scheme goes like this. Sample an SSD out to reviewers and spec it reasonably well. Once all the reviews are in, swap out the components for inferior products that are not as power efficient and or do not offer the same performance. That's what Tom's Hardware found when it investigated Crucial's P2 NVMe M.2 SSD after reviewing the initial part shipped by Crucial. Crucial has swapped the TLC NAND it originally shipped with QLC NAND and not terribly good QLC NAND at that. The new version of the P2 has two fewer NAND chip packages than the original, and significantly fewer total dies. This reduces the total potential bandwidth the SSD controller can achieve, and further harms the performance of the 500 gigabyte drive. The average power consumption on the QLC drive is lower, at 1.49 watts, but total power efficiency is actually worse because the savings do not make up for the dramatically slower performance. If full drive performance of the P2 was already bad, it's downright abysmal on the P2 with QLC NAND. So that was on the 16th. Exactly a week ago, on August 24th, Joel followed up 
that piece with another titled Western Digital Caught Bait and Switching Customers with Slow SSDs. Again, the link in the show notes. He said, when I wrote about Crucial's decision to swap inferior NAND flash into its products without updating the reviewer community or announcing a separate SKU, I noted the problem was a one-off. While this has happened before, it's typically been the exception, not the norm. Guess that was too much to hope for. According to a report from Chinese tech site X Preview, the WD SN550 Blue, which is currently one of the best reviewed budget SSDs on the market, has undergone a NAND lobotomy. While the new SSD variant performs subpar with the old drive that WD actually sampled for review, once you exhaust the SLC, that is to say single level cache, NAND cache, performance craters from 610 megabytes per second, as measured by THG, to 390 megabytes per second, as measured by X Preview. The new drive offers just 64% of the performance of the old drive. This is unacceptable. It is unethical for any company to sample and launch a product to strong reviews, only to turn around and sell an inferior version of that hardware at a later date without changing the product SKU or telling customers that they're buying garbage. His words. He says, I do not use the term garbage lightly, but let me be clear. If you silently change the hardware components you use in a way that makes your product lose performance and you do not disclose that information prominently to the customer, ideally through a separate SKU, you are selling garbage. There's nothing wrong with selling a slower SSD at a good price. And there's nothing right about abusing the goodwill of reviewers and enthusiasts to kick bad hardware out the door. And sadly, Joel followed this with his latest review in this series just last Friday the 27th by posting, Samsung is the latest SSD manufacturer caught cheating its customers. He said, in the past 11 days, both Crucial and Western Digital have been caught swapping the TLC NAND used for certain products with inferior QLC NAND without updating product SKUs or informing reviewers that this change was happening. Shipping one product to reviewers and a different product to consumers is unacceptable, and we recently recommended that readers buy SSDs from Samsung or Intel in lieu of Western Digital or Crucial. As of today, we have to take Samsung off that list. One difference in this situation is that Samsung isn't swapping TLC for QLC. It's swapping the drive controller and TLC for a different inferior drive controller and different TLC. The net effect is still a steep performance decline in certain tests. We've asked Intel to specify to specifically confirm it does not engage in this kind of consumer hostile behavior and will report back if it does. So Joel's post goes on to show photos of the peeled off top label of a Samsung 970 EVO plus SSD to reveal very different chips underneath the label. And of course, there's no problem with them doing that. They're free to put whatever chip they like on their products. But if that's done after the drives have been reviewed to shave their cost and and the user's performance, I agree with Joel. That's not okay. Is it uh, possible it's, it's chip shortages? I mean, they should certainly yes. disclose, but... It, it They may have exactly that, you know, like have no choice, but they would have to then suspend that part and just say, sorry, this part is no is temporarily not available. You know, here's the best one we have to offer. Um, and just to put a bow on this, Western Digital 
did, said in June of 2021, we replaced the NAND in the WD Blue SN550 NVMe SSD and updated the firmware. So that confirms that an undocumented parts change they made was responsible for this 50% reduction in writing performance. They said, quote, at the time, we updated the product data sheet. For greater transparency going forward, if we make a change to an existing internal SSD, we commit to introducing a new model number whenever any related published specifications are impacted. So they don't they didn't say when the performance changes, but they did say when any related published specifications are impacted. So, you know, that's something. Anyway, I wanted to put this on everyone's radar to make sure that our listeners knew that this was apparently going on within the industry. Uh, as you n noted, Leo, there is a chip shortage which is impacting all kinds of things, uh, threatening maybe to raise prices somewhat uh, just due to a, a price increase uh, at, all the way back at the fab, you know, seller's end. Uh, everyone knows that I believe in benchmarks uh, and in performance testing. GRC's DNS benchmark uh, has become the industry standard tool with more now than 7 million downloads of that little puppy. Uh, and the first thing I did, as our listeners know, with Spinrite's new driver technology was to create the read speed drive benchmark. One of the things we immediately learned was that there were some very weird things going on inside our SSDs. They do not behave at all like the solid state RAM we wish they were. You know, now is not the time for me to dig into those particular weeds, but everyone can rest assured that, that you know, this has my attention uh, and that a future spin right is going to be quite revealing. Oh, good. 